Hey there and welcome to the tag along. For today you will need your basic tatting kit. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a crochet hook, one shuttle wound, and a ball of thread. If you prefer, you can use a second shuttle. It is not necessary for the cross pattern itself. Once we get to the tail, you are going to need a second shuttle. But just for the cross part, just a one shuttle wound and a ball of thread, a pair of scissors, and a crochet hook is your basic tatting kit. And you will, of course, also need the pattern. So you can check the description box below for the link to the pattern. But today, that's what you're going to need. And so there you are. There's all the supplies necessary for today. So go ahead and gather those and we're going to get started. Hello everybody, let's get started. I hope you've gathered your supplies. So let's get rolling. Here we go. There's some finished, well, whoopsie daisy. There's some finished products to inspire you. Again, these are different sizes of threads, so you need to pay attention uh, which sizes and just kind of so you know size of thread makes a difference in the motif even though they're tatted exactly the same so this is size 5 size 10 size 20 size 40 and i do i am working on a size 80 that i hope to be able to show you in just a little bit but i'm going a little cross-eyed because it's very very small <laughs> so i will get that tatted up and i'll show that to you uh hopefully in this series sometime so welcome to getting started you're going to need your pattern and if you're very very brand new you might consider going to Gloria's site and getting a copy of Ringhead he's my guy Ringhead Joe he's not my I didn't invent him he's Gloria's guy but um, but he's he's my man he's my main man so uh, this will also help us as we go on tatting so let's get started how do you start this project so, like I said in the other video, all you need to remember is 3, 6, and 12. Those are the only numbers that you really need to remember. As I said before, Gina did an awesome job laying this out so that we can turn it as we are tatting the cross. We can turn these numbers to face us as we need to so they look like what we're, what's being tatted up in our hands. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this just so maybe we can get a little bit more of it on screen at the same time as we're tatting. So there's that. So grab your ball and your shuttle and let's get going. You can start this two ways. Let me just move that. Because this is made for newbie noob noobs, I'm just going to start with a knot. It's really not going to matter that much. So we're just going to start with any old knot. If I can stay on screen, that'd be even more helpful, huh? So <laughs> just tie any old knot. Um, I don't like to leave a long end, so I tie them close to the edge. You can do whatever you like. Just get them started. Tie any old knot you like. Okay. Any old knot. Now, if you remember my last video, I talked a little bit about reading your tatting when you pick it up. And so we want the shuttle to be on top. So make sure the shuttle thread is on top. And I really hope that that's contrasting enough to see on camera that purple and the blue is contrasting enough. Um, I can change the background color of what's on my table if that helps too. Hold on, let me experiment. I'll be right back. Well, what do you know? You do a little experimentation and you find something that makes those colors show up better. So we're going to start at number one. All the rings are three pico three pico three pico three so that's what we're gonna do so you just pick up your thread 
wrap your hand for a ring and you just begin tatting and your first stitch you want to snug pretty close to that knot one two three and don't worry I'm not going to go this slow the whole time <laughs> and don't worry and uh, also if I am going too slow you have the wheel you can speed me up make a pico and then let me widen that out if I can okay I'd just like to point your attention because this is going to be an issue it was an issue for me just to understand how to count so there's one complete double stitch you leave some thread space and one complete double stitch and then you take the thread space and you squish it together so that that double stitch and that double stitch are right next to each other and that creates the pico i talk more about picos in a video i have called pico play that i will be linking to watch this upper corner it'll have a lot of other links to other videos um i I hope that I have time to get other videos made in the meantime, but if I don't, they'll be out in the weeks after this tat along that'll go over other elements in detail, especially like split ring. And uh, I already did a Clooney one, spiral chain, spiral, you know, whatever. So we'll get to that, but that is a Pico. So then since there's already a double stitch here, It's one, two, three, pico. And there's your double stitch already on this side. So one, two, three, now it's time for another pico. So, first half, but leave some room. Second half, one, two, three. So three, pico, three, pico, three, pico, three, pico, three, three. Now time for this last pico, three, and then we're going to close. Scooch off of there, buddy. All right. So make the first half leave a little space that's going to be your pico kind of hold it with your thumb i need a little bit more room here second half there's your one i need some more room here pull from underneath to widen out your loom and then just unclick some so there was our one two three okay so now we've got our three pico three pico three pico three now here comes a choice you can either just close which just pull on your shuttle thread and close this ring or you can choose to post your shuttle it honestly does not matter it is completely tatters choice i've gotten into the habit of posting my rings all posting means if you want to be a beginner and be advanced and be you know 
like you got something going on, like you know an advanced technique and impress all your friends, then, I don't know why I got Southern right then, but <laughs> you do what you want. All you do to post your shuttle, here's my loop, here's my loom on my hand. Take your shuttle and pass it through so it's coming out on the other side. And then pull, hold all your stitches or as many as you can in the pinch. Pull on your shuttle thread. Pull, pull, pull. And then close it down. And you want to pull toward 7 o'clock to tighten it up. You want it to be an ovid shape, like an egg. So you do the floofy dance, that's what I call it when uh, when you get done making something and you just sort of pull on it gently and you do the floofy dance. That's what it's called. Now let's talk a little but let's get ring head because he, he's going to help us know when we need to reverse and not reverse our work. So here we've got ring head, our ring, facing the correct way. He's up, see his eyes. There he is. Now we're going to get to do this chain. So arms are up means reverse work. Okay, so don't let this complicate the issue. Reverse work simply means top becomes bottom, bottom becomes top. Top becomes bottom bottom becomes top. Okay? Now, if you look, as I said before about reading your tatting, if you look, blue is on top. If I went to try to set up for a chain with purple, see how it crosses over and doesn't lay properly? There's a thread in the way. So blue is the free one ready to do a chain. So you set up for a chain, go over the three, back around. Don't worry, this will pick up. This is for newbie, newbie, noobs. So I'm trying to go slow. So I'm sorry for those that are a little more advanced than this, but we need to learn. So we're gonna make a chain and we're on a corner, so we're going to make a chain of 12. All the rest of these have 6. But these at the corners have 12. So, here you go, double stitching time. If you made your knot, if this is how you chose to start and you just have a knot with these tails, just tuck these tails in, get them out of your way, move them, hide them, however you got to do it. Um, try not to cut them off because... You don't want to cut your nose off to spite your face kind of thing. So again, one, and you want to snug that first stitch really kind of down almost into the crotch of that ring, if you will. Can't think of a better term. So the opening part of that ring right there, get your tails out of the way because they will try to get in the way because they want to be part of the party too. Then second half, the double stitch. These are all flipped stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And if you're not sure, this is where I count. This is how I count. Let me see if I can hold them all. Good luck. Okay. Let's see if I can get something pointy here. I count these little moons, these little bumps, the, the belts basically. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Everybody see that? I know you can't answer me, so I'm going to rhetorically think that you said yes. Now, at the end of chains, what you want to do is, this, see this one's kind of straight, you want to gently snug. Now, be careful with this pattern because if you snug real tight like that, you're going to have trouble because this is what I kept doing and why mine didn't lay right and why I eventually tried one where I started with chain with ring number two and I started over on the side and went up around up and around that's terrible on that background but that's the one I started on with ring two and then when I got back over to 40 I had to do 40 chain whoopsie now I'm throwing crosses instead of shuttles <laughs> that's not good but when I got back around I had to do 40 chain one chain and then come back so that's an option if you're if you're really struggling but don't snug this chain too snuggy because it'll it'll mess you up when you get when you get around you don't want to be i'm an excessively tight tatter most of the time so tight tatters beware loosen up just a hair especially on this first chain so now let's go back to our pattern now we've completed ring one and this chain so now let's turn and look at it let's get ring head back and look and this is what we've got number two reverse work arms up so we're going to be reversing work each time because all of the arms are up so let's reverse work again top becomes bottom bottom becomes top reverse work now again we're set up for a ring if we were to try to set up for a ring with this it would be see how there's a thread in the way see how it twists if i try to take this one so that's what i mean about reading your tatting this one is unencumbered it's ready so take this one and set up for a ring and guess what we're gonna do three pico three pico three three pico three pico three pico three this is number one that has a pico on top we're going to be joining to this pico up here Okay, so here we go. One, and this first double stitch, you want to be as close as possible to the blue thread, but don't choke the life out of it and make it uh, a smaller stitch. You want your stitches to be consistent in size. So there's one. two, three, pico. So again, make that first double stitch, first half, leave some thread, call it about there. Second half, come down. Now you just squeeze them together. There's your pico. Pretty ingenious little thing, huh? And then there's your one so two three here comes our join so for this join we need to join to this pico right here so take this pico and lay it next to your work okay Next to your core thread, your loom is going around your hand. Try not to drop it and keep it in camera. So you guys have the easy part. You're not trying to keep it all in camera. Take your crochet hook, go down through the pico, grab a piece of that loom thread, pull it 
up through the pico. Now watch my middle finger. You want to take your middle finger out just so you have something to pop it up onto to keep and hold it open. Because if you don't, now let's see if it's going to make me a liar. Because usually when I try to demonstrate this, it makes me a liar. Of course it is. Normally, when you let go of that loop, it twists. And you don't want twisty picos unless you're making twisty picos and we're not. So that's why you pop it up on that finger. So getting into that habit is a really, 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 really good habit to get into. Pop it up on that finger, finger and it holds the tension of it so that this stays open and untwisted, which is exactly what we want to happen. Take your shuttle from right to left, go through that pico. Whoa, don't drop it. Oh, try again. Go through the pico with your shuttle. And then lift up just like you were. Put your middle finger back, lift, and down, down, down you go. And just pull it until it's just snug and it's the same height as your other stitches. Then put your thumb over it. Now, choice number two. You can choose to put the second half in. And that's what I'm going to do. Put that second half in and then count one because that is now a full stitch. One. Or you could choose to not put the second half in and start over ignoring the join completely and count one, two, three, and just have like a half little hitch right here. It is completely up to you. Make sure whichever one that you choose in your pattern, you do the same way consistently throughout the entire pattern. It doesn't matter, at least in the most patterns that I've done, which granted I haven't done a ton, but it doesn't matter as long as you are consistent. You need to be consistent with what you're doing because your count needs to be consistent. So this now is a full stitch. So now that counts as one. That join is now one because we put in the first half when we went through the pico and pulled it down. And then we put in the second half just now. So that's now one stitch. And now we're going to go two, three, Time for another pico. And try to keep your picos consistent. I mean, I know it's hard. You're a beginner and, you know, um, I am choosing not to use a pico gauge in this because I think it's just another thing to be fiddly and drop and have a hard time with. So I am choosing to not use it. Here's something that helps me when I look at a pattern, especially a repeat pattern. I know that all of my rings are supposed to have three picos. So I just look and see if I've got three picos. One, join, pico. That counts as my little pico in there. So I've got three picos. So now all I need is this three double stitches and I'm ready to close the ring. This helps me because sometimes I get lost in the repetitive pattern and I end up, that's two, three, and I end up making way more picots or double stitches than I need to. I'm sure I'm the only one that's ever done that. So then I posted my shuttle front to back again, doesn't matter. Um, posting your shuttle just at the end of these, this stitch, these stitches right here, when you're closing your ring, they want to roll, for me at least, they want to roll inwards or outwards or sidewards or whatever. And so posting your shuttle helps those to not roll because you're not pulling kind of against them. You're, you're opening this space a little bit. And also if you make a mistake, God forbid, knock on wood, all that kind of stuff. If you do make a mistake, it's easier to open the ring back up if you have posted your shuttle. At least in theory, that's the lie I tell myself. Um, I hope that you find that to be true. So this one needs a little bit of pulling on, usually in my case, just so that I get 
more of this look to it where this pico and this pico are not you know looking like oh i should have joined them and that's a big mistake or this one's not pulling weird so i did make those picos a little big but that's okay you'll see that it really will work out in the end so again here we are on the pattern so we just did two now we're going to do a chain of six so top becomes bottom bottom becomes top reverse work set up for a chain around and back just like that and it's time for six double stitches choke up a little bit because you don't need as much thread out from a chain as you do for a ring one of the reasons I think I've been drawn to post shuttles is it's easier for me to choke up um, on a post than it is on a bobbin. But And you want that first stitch to be right in, right in there. So really work it down in it, really dance it right down in till it's nice and snug. But again, don't compromise the height of your stitch and choke it off because you want it to be the same height as all the rest. So there's one. I mean half, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that kind of bunched up on itself and tried to do a pico. See how that's kind of ugly and all bumpy right there? If that bothers you, you can retro tap. Other, otherwise called frogging. Rip it, rip it, rip it. So, I usually use a pico, a pico, <laughs> a crochet hook. Um, I've also used, I've showed you on a different video, a sugar scribe. Um, those are very pointy. A hat pin works pretty good. And you just open up that stitch and then follow the thread back through and again usually let's see if I can get it really close here try not to fuzz it out if you get under the belt loop kind of thing and really and then just gently pull that opens that stitch up and unflip you just saw me unflip it and then up Okay, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take two more out. So we're gonna do, we're gonna frog these. So like I said, see the belt loop? That belt loop right there? I'm gonna push up under that belt loop gently. You don't wanna split your ply. Work it open. There you go. Unflip that stitch and go way through. You just follow it. You're just untying your knots basically. And just working it in there, trying your very, very best. Oh, see, I just split my ply. See that? I just stuck it in there. Trying your very best not to split your ply, especially when you're demonstrating it on camera. But you do it anyway. Because everybody makes mistakes. All right, so let's count. Where did we leave off here? One, two, three, four. Okay. So I just need two more double stitches and this one is good. Choke up a little bit, sorry. Ooh, that went very fuzzy. So there's five and six. And then, then again, gently snug. This is called snugging your stitches when you hold them in the pinch and just gently pull that around to make a curve. Now, normally I would say, you know, really give it a good curve because you want it really curvy that's how I like my chains really curvy in this pattern if I pull them that tight it pulls the rest of this wonky so I kind of leave them a little loose you do what you like but this is how I'm going to demonstrate so that it all kind of stays and looks like a cross by the time I'm done so I have two rings one two I'm on my third so again arms up put ring head joe back up He's facing up, whoops, pull it right out of your hand. Take the loom off and set up again. Now you're gonna pick up your shuttle, wind your hand for a ring, and you're off to the races. 
Now this time we have to join, this is, sit up there ring two. See, this is what I mean about ring two. He gets a little lazy and leans, leans into ring one a little too much. So ring two is joined to ring three at this pico. So before we did one, two, three, pico, one, two, three, join. Now we're gonna do one, two, three, pico. So, I mean, one, two, three, join. Oh, do as I do and not as I say, my goodness gracious. Here we go, set up for a ring. One, that first stitch, you want to be sure is as close as possible to that other one and close any gaps, but make sure it looks like the same height. You don't want to choke it off and make it little bitty bitty. You want it to be the same height so it looks consistent. Consistency is key. So there's the second half, two, three. Now we're gonna join. So again, get that pico close. Get your paper out of the way so people can see what you're doing. Okay, see how I've laid my pico really close so my thread is just sitting right there and I just don't have to do very much to lift it up. See there? There's my core thread and I've kind of got it behind that pico and I'm just going to pick it up. I'm going to just do an up join and just lift it up. Now, if you wanted, you could get fancy and it would hide your picos, quote unquote, hide your picos a little bit better if you did a down join. And all that would do is if you would take this and lay it on top like that, and then take your crochet hook and pull it down through the pico Put that on your finger, but if I did a down join, get back up here. See what I mean about twisting? Now it's going to twist. And then you would do up through there like that. Was I off the whole time? That's awesome. And then you would pull that and snug that pretty close. And again, we're doing the second half. So then that counts as one, two, three, pico, which also counts as one, two, three. Open up your loom a little bit. Pico, two, three. So there you go. There's your three picos, one, two, three. That one got a little big on that join there. And if you wanted to, you could retro tap. I just retro tatted to show you, but if it really bothers you and you wanna be perfectionistic, you certainly can. And then pull it snug around till seven and there you go and then again reverse work six so we've done one two three three okay so you just keep going up until you get to number seven okay i'm going to do up to number seven off camera just keep repeating over and over till you get to seven and i'll meet you back and we'll do seven eight nine and onward after that hold your horses i'll be right back okay so i'm just finishing up ring seven so i have one more pico two three okay and then I'm gonna post and close. And a good rule of thumb is every once in a while, let that shuttle dangle and untwist. 
pull gently on your shuttle thread and close. Now, as you can see, we're getting a little bit of a, a tail here. So just keep moving it out of, out of your way. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're here on our pattern at number seven. Now I did another sample. Where'd you go? Other sample. There you are. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here we are at ring seven and you can't hardly see those chains. I apologize. There you go, seven. Now if we look at this, eight, nine, and 10 are a clover. So Ringhead Joe does talk about this. Down here on the clover part. So there's a thread coming in from here so this would be arm up. So this would be reverse work, just like we've been doing reverse work, but look at his eyes, his eyes up, eyes up, eyes up. So we'd come in from this chain. We would reverse work to get to this ring. We would complete this ring. Then we would do a second ring right here and then not reverse work, do our third ring right here. And then this coming off, we would reverse. Okay. Now let's see that in real practice. Here's my, this is my coming up like this thread, my cross. So there's my ring one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I'm getting ready to make eight. So then I would make eight. There's my chain of six coming in. Then I would make eight, not reverse work, make nine, not reverse work, make 10. And then I would reverse work and make my chain again. So there's my chain coming in from seven and there's my chain going out from 10. Nine doesn't have any chains on it. See, nine's open. Get that right up in your grill. Come on. Focus. There you go. Ooh, that was by magic. See? So that's for the chain view. That's just for the clover straight up view. And there's a little trick that I want to show you for this chain. So that's why I said, let's come back and do that one together. So make sure I've counted right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. So I need to do my chain of six. All right. So reverse work set up for a chain. Sorry about that. Choke up a little bit. Okay. One. And really snug that one in there. Two. Three. Four. Try to hold them in the pinch so they don't roll around. Five. And six. Okay. Now gently snug it. Reverse work. Now we're going to do eight. Eight joins to seven at that third, you know, three pico, that first pico. So hold it. Set up for a ring. Do pretty much as we've been doing all along up to this point. Try to hold it. So it's facing the right. Okay, here we go. Got a little all thumbs there. So again, snug that one down close, but don't choke it off. One, two, three. Lost my hook there for a second. 
go down through that pico and like i was saying the down join is usually used on front side back side when you want there to be a definite front and a definite back and i will say um a lot of times you can decide what your if you would need to do that by what you're going to do with your piece two three if it's going to be in a shadow box or framed piece and you want it to be all facing the same direction you know have a front and a back because you want the front to show always in the display case then maybe you should consider trying a little front side back side and this would be a good easy pattern to practice front side back side and all you would have to do to do so would be to when you reverse your work and do your chains you would do the second half first and the first half second so you just flip the order of your stitches we call it rods r-o-d-s reverse order double stitches and that would be a good way to practice, I think, front side, back side. I don't want to get too much information to confuse the issue. So that's all I'm going to say about that. But front side, back side just means it has, you want it to have a specific front and a specific back. I personally, this is my personal opinion, I have a very hard time telling which is front side and which is back side. So I kind of figure... You know, it's that old quilting thing. If you can't see it, you know, riding from the back of a horse at a gallop, it doesn't really count. <laughs> um, so I, um, if I have to get a magnifying glass out and look at the picos, which is really the way to see if it's front side, back side or not, um, and it really, you can't really tell that closely, then I'm, I really don't care to, to, to major on it, quite frankly. So let me lay this down and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We are now at eight. So now I want you to really look and see this. There's no blue line coming off of nine. This is a clover. So we're going to go right from eight, ringhead Joe. This would be eight. We're going to go right from eight straight into nine and there's the chain coming in would be coming in that way we've reverse work now we're not going to reverse work in between there so now we're going to do ring nine so pick up your work again we're set up for a ring purple's ready to go that's our ring color and this gets a bit fiddly and you'll see me, sometimes I want to go like this and have everything be on top of my hand. Sometimes I just sort of stick it through the hole in my hand. Sometimes I just do this and go over the whole thing. It doesn't really matter. You're just trying to keep it out of the way. So you can do whatever feels comfortable to you. And that is the best way. So I'm going to try to show my work. So I'm going to try to have this on front, on top. We'll see how it goes. Maybe this will be a complete failure and then we'll know that way it didn't work. So here we go. We're gonna make another ring. And again, same thing, same idea. We wanna get that and you might have to turn it just a little bit, not turn like, turn the pages of a book, just kind of rotate it to accommodate the other stitch. So that's the first half one. Okay, two, three, three double stitches, and just like the other one, it joins to eight. There is a join there. So we're going to join to eight, go down through the pico grab some thread put it up on our middle finger just to keep it open and untwisted run your shuttle run your shuttle through it pop your finger back down pull it down pull everything snug dance it down make it the same height as the rest of your stitches hold that in the pinch put the second half in because that's the way we're doing it this time so now that's one complete stitch so one, whoops, throw your shuttle. 
There you go, Mr. Tom. <laughs> I threw a shuttle. <laughs> Two. Three. Pico. Now. See this Pico on nine? It also joins to 17, to 25, and to 33. So I'm going to retro tat that last stitch out I did. And even though these picots are pretty big, these are much larger than I would normally make them, I'm going to make this one just even a little bit bigger because it has to join to these other uh, rings. So I'm just going to make it just the tiniest bit bigger. We don't want a ginormous, ginormous. So we're just going to go for moderately ginormous. And of course, when I'm trying to make it bigger, it shrinks down. So just keep pulling it until you feel like you've got where you want to be. This is a, like I said, a fairly simple pattern. It goes pretty quick so you can make more of these in practice. Um, this is a great practice pattern. Thank you again, Miss Gina, for letting me use this. I hope I've done you proud. Two, three, one last pico. One, two, three, getting a little small. We can do it. Okay. Okay, post your shuttle if you want. Pull and close. There you go. Now we're starting to turn this corner. There's nine. We don't have to reverse work. There's no chain coming off. So again, the third, we're going to just sort of turn our work so we can accommodate it. And again, set up purple still on top. Reading our tatting. We know which one we want. We're going to grab this, set up for another ring. Okay, now. We've made nine and nine was kind of like this. So now we're going, I keep bumping the microphone. I'm sorry if that's making lo loud noises. Now we're at 10. Okay, so now it's facing us. We're doing this clover, eight, nine, 10, no reversing work. My shuttle needs to be dangled because it's twisty, see? All right, all right, one and again, snug it pretty close, but don't choke it. One, two, three, and guess what? Three join. So again, down through the pico, pull up the loop. That's why it's called an up join. Pull up a loop, pull up a loop. Pop it on your finger to keep it out of the way. I just really closed down that loom really a lot. So let's try to open it a bit. There we go. Run your shuttle through it. I think I might have just twisted it. Nope, I didn't. Okay, beautiful. See how it's not twisted? Put it, pull it down. Put in the second half, that's one, two, three, a pico, two, three, a pico, need some more room, keep closing it down. Pico, two, three. Now again, I usually look every once in a while just to make sure. One, two, three. Okay, I have three. And see how that one looks a little sickly? Doesn't really match the other ones. Here's a little trick. Take your crochet hook, stick it down through there, get it to where the barrel is a little bigger and just gently pull up ever so slightly and you just growed your pico see you just made him a little bigger 
post your su shuttle and call it good. Okay. So hold those in the pinch, pull, pull, pull around towards seven, all of that stuff. You know it, you got this by now. So do your floofy dance, all of that. So now we have now turned the corner. We've made our clover. So now this thread coming off, let me get ring head again. This thread coming off, his arm is up. If you kind of turn, turn him to look, there's the, there's the 10th. See how his arm is up. So we're going to reverse our work and we're going to get ready to put that chain in there. And here comes a little trick. It was taught by, to me, by Miss Harola. And if you get a chance, check out her, her stuff. She has really cute designs. Okay, this is kind of awkward. And I'm trying to keep it all so I'm showing you on camera, but. Okay, set up for your chain. Go ahead and wrap your finger. And then, when you're ready, whoopsie, see, throw your shuttle again. <laughs> uh, slippery little suckers. It's also getting very humid in here, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to tap for much longer because everything's sticking to me. Um, now, when you go to start tatting this chain, a little trick is to tat the second half of the double stitch. Okay and pull and walk that down. See how it just can join up real perfect right in there. Hold that in your pinch and then start tatting as normal. So one first half, second half. It doesn't add hardly anything and it snugs up. You'll see once we tighten it down, it snugs up that join. So there was one, two, three, four, five, six. So give it a little tug, but see how now those are, I didn't do a good job on the first part of that ring or that chain, but see how that's all snug together and you can see probably a little better on this one. There is a little bit of a gaposis there from that thread laying there. But see how that just kind of closes that up and if I would have pulled that tighter it would sit just like that. So that's a really good thing to do um, if you're coming from a chain into a clover back to a chain to tap that first half or excuse me, the second half of the double stitch first and just so you can suck those together. It's also really good to do after you come off of a thrown off chain, a thrown off ring and you're coming back to the chain, which we're not gonna do. This doesn't have one of those. This is a very simple, easy pattern. But just remember that trick when you're coming off of a thrown off ring and I will try to remember to put that in my video, of course, as a tip when we get to the thrown off ring video. Um, to tap that second half of the double stitch first and then just continue on with your stitches and it just makes a really nice um, tight beautiful sucked together you know supposed to be looking like that corner so this is 9 10 so we left off at 10 let's put there there you go that's better 10 again reverse work do 11 six double stitches, chain 11 and 12, rings 11 and 12. When you're finished with ring 12, reverse work and do 12 double stitches. Reverse work, do your chain, your ring 13, but pay attention to your ring 13 because you're not doing three join, you're doing three pico three join, three pico, three close, and then 12 again. Um, 
meet me back here. We'll do this corner again, and then we're going to go ahead on, and we're going to stop up here at 21 um, in this video, and then we'll keep continuing on the with the rest in a different video. So I'll meet you back when I'm ready for uh, 13. first half here. I appreciate your time and your patience and I hope that you're having a blast. I hope that you're having a good time. If you have any questions or concerns or just want to um, tell me what a horrible job I'm doing. No, I'm just kidding. If you have any, uh, any feedback at all, I'd love to hear it. Facebook page, Opposable Thumbs and Scissors. Uh, if you want, you could email me. I prefer the Facebook. It, that way everybody can, we can maybe have a discussion about it and uh, we can learn from one another and that would be super fun. So as I always say and is the truth, you are the masters of the thread. You have opposable thumbs and scissors. I'll see you next time.